Yeah. Justin, don't, 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 uh, are you going to have an animated GIF during the, the, for reals? This is the Night Force Action Report for uh. Tuesday night. <laughs> oh. What, really? Oh. Did you want the GIF? I have some animated GIFs coming your way right now, and they're the best yeah. ones you've there ever are, seen. The GIFs are out of play, because now i got to start the show over. Because, oh no, I don't. <laughs> We're not doing it. Well, because no. he was a no. he was a secret intro? Because you were disappointed <laughs> in starting the show. Secret. <laughs> I have no idea. It was usually like a we, I usually have my guy Phil who's here. Phil, where were you on that, bud? Thanks. Got a Thanks. guy who's supposed to tell me when it's time to go, so No, it's time to go, because it's Tuesday, November nineteenth, twenty thirteen. From HorribleNight.com, I'm Justin Lacey here with Ethan Moses, who's happy to be here. Oh yeah. And, fine. It's and fine. also, <laughs> Josh Lee is here as well. It's like a reunion. I'm so happy. It's been yeah, like, it is. Well, it's, uh, it's almost been. I guess it's only been three weeks since I saw Josh. But Ethan, yeah. Uh, I don't even feel like we got to hang out with Ethan during the charity marathon. That was that no, was, I don't either. Um, but but he yeah, did, it, you did you did unwittingly save the day because there was no chance in hell we were pushing through. <laughs> Uh, those four or five hours yeah. without you. <laughs> that was no. It was it was actually fun. I felt yeah. It was fun to listen in on that. But I gotta tell you, man, that first one we did was Ooh. hard to top. That was that was fun because I was there. I, I enjoy being <laughs> I'd say, in places with people. I'd say year one is the top, but year uh, year three is now a close second. That was uh, that looked fun. That you was, guys looked like you were fun, and I cried because of it. It was a uh, it was a good setup, and nobody's house was in danger. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and tear down, tear down was not as bad as I feared either. So um, mm, that's good. But uh, that was a, that was a good time. Um, yeah. So Ethan, what have you been doing? Uh well, man, what have I been doing? Uh, a little, a little bit of everything actually. I've been uh, doing some jogging. I've been jogging with a new friend. Uh, that's fun. Is it an animal We've or a person? That. Uh, it's a person animal. <laughs> it's a it's a hybrid of a. <laughs> <laughs> a capuchin monkey and a man. It's a, it's a Whoa! Animal. What the? It's not <laughs> no, what I was no, expecting. It, it, it's it's a human human. So I do have some human friends, contrary to popular belief. Um, so I've been doing that uh, lately. I don't know. I've been um, trying to reignite the fire of editorial content and then critical thinking because I've just hated all aspects of that for like the last few weeks. And I and I think I've kind of uh, jumped back into it somewhat um but yeah i've been kind of i've actually been like avoiding the internet to a certain degree because i don't know what happened i think maybe like two weeks ago everyone just started to suck like in a a really bad way and i think what happened and i don't think you have connected the dots here yet but i was extremely pissed to find out after the fact that during our marathon that the the extra life marathon got hacked and oh yeah, yeah, yeah that was just like i you and I have kind of talked about like just it's just been a lot of negativity in the stuff that uh, the circles mm-hmm. we kind of run into a re- on a regular basis and yeah I, I took a, I took a week off after the charity marathon and uh, but I think that might have that might have lingered with you in the back of your mind beyond other things well that I mean that was that was kind of a big deal though you know in the end it ended up helping them so like I kind of like it, it's kind of like with the Arnita. Anita Sarkeesian or whatever, like every time douchebags show up, they just make you know the person they're trying to attack more successful. But I've been actually, I've got a, I've got a website. I'm not going to name it. Um, it's a website I've followed for a really long time. I'm not going to name the name, but uh, anyone that knows me, I've talked about it. But they have just been very uh, passive aggressive about some stuff. And there's another website, Polygon, for anyone that's okay. familiar with it, has just been getting shit on by everybody. And I'm just like, don't have why opinions, we, man. That's my opinion. Uh, well, that, it, it's the weird thing. It's like, like, why are we? We are now at a point in video game journalism uh, where we're like, we're not even covering news. We're just making silly jokes about other websites and like, I don't. Know. It's really weird. It was like I was in a really weird space, like trying to find like what website I was going to, what website I can, I feel like I can trust, and I feel like they actually give good. Which one's um, the real website? Wait. Well, which one isn't full of a bunch of like douchey, geeky guys that are still pissed about high school? Like, like I've I've been getting that vibe lately, and so Justin actually sent me a podcast on Monday, 
Yeah. And yeah, I kind of saved my it kind of saved my outlook, like my, my outlook on things because I was like, okay, here's a guy. Um, and I don't remember the guy's I name. I think it's Jeff it Canetta. I'll, I'll yeah, okay, yeah, 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 Jeff Canetta. Oh yeah, Jeff Canetta. Yeah. And from uh, the from the Totally Rad show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That guy. Wow. Thank God. Thank. I'm glad I listened to that because that guy is pretty awesome. He 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 was making some really good points about how. Uh, about cynicism, especially in um, gaming journalism, and just how people just are inclined to just jump on things and just be shitty about things and always are, are expecting to be disappointed. And me, I'm always kind of like, I, I, I want to play a game, I'm excited about the game, and then everything comes, comes after that. So there for a while I thought, well, maybe I'm doing it wrong. But I, no, he, I tell you what, he... He turned me back. He was like like an old friendly man that was kind of young man. Come and let me tell you. And put me on his knee and kind of like kind of you know rub my back in like a platonically nice way and said, "Hey, everything's gonna be okay." So yeah, no, rub, I, rub. that was a good thing. Yeah, you know. So did it rub, also rub, like grandma used to do. So it was um yeah it was Giant Bomb's other their morning show podcast, but uh, Patrick Klepek had Jeff on while one of the other dudes was out and uh, um they uh, did it also make you it was, it was the weekend after. Or the week after BlizzCon, did you make make you want to go to BlizzCon? Because they made BlizzCon no, sound honestly. like the happiest place on earth. <laughs> I after Gamescom, <laughs> you're comms, done with- I can just I, from the distance. I, I yeah, I was gonna say I you know I don't know th- th- those are they're really cool experiences, but um, I I've realized after going to that like I really like video games and I like people to an extent, um, sure. but I <laughs> crowd three hundred thousand people is a lot of like video people. game people. You know, so, so are you gonna let me uh, when when we do indie popcon next year, and we come up with an idea for our own little um, presentation? Mm-hmm. All I know is that it revolves around having a giant projected screen of just your face in the background, <laughs> skyped well, into whatever we're doing. But you're gonna like be eating us like from but, behind, like, like wait, the wait. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yes. I would very. I, I like the idea of indie popcorn because it like just kind of like with uh, Gen Con. I didn't know a whole lot, so I was like learning new things, and I'm like I'm excited to see a bunch of different, you know, entertainment mediums and a bunch of different stuff there. Whereas Gamescom, like I was like, oh okay, these are all video games, and everybody's like, oh, do you hear about this? You know, well they said it in German, so that was always kind of <laughs> off-putting too. But um, so so I don't. I, I kind of liked it, like learn new things and, and do new stuff there. So I'm excited about that. But Gamescom was just. I've talked about it enough. But, yeah, uh, I felt I felt I bad know. for you out there on your own. I feel like if we were a drunken crew together, we could conquer it. You, you, you can't go to those things by yourself. No, you <laughs> it's can't. like going to a movie by yourself. I would like you really want to go to it, yeah. but uh, at the end of the day, you probably need to bring like a squad of dudes, especially if a fight breaks out. Because if a fight broke Dude out, squad. I don't know if I could have. Oh man, I would be in trouble. Like you know. I, I can only take twenty of those guys, you know, <laughs> and there was at least three hundred thousand of them there. So, <laughs> Josh, you know what? I I think there are yes. Go ahead. Thank you, you for you continue the conversation. <clears throat> so when you're talking about all that negativity, I want to say I found some joy uh, from the internet gaming community this past weekend, and it came in the form of a place I never go. Uh, and that's a neo gaff. Oh, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I thought he was gonna make a horrible night joke. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, no, I really never go there. Um, <laughs> neo gaff's just like a once in a while thing. So I don't know. I, this maybe is a thing. Maybe you guys already all know this, but uh, neo gaff really likes their animated gifs. Sure, mm-hmm. and. I've, so there's this thread about apparently there's this Antonio Banderas uh, the meme thing or gif or whatever that was kind of making the rounds there and I, I'm thinking it all originated there a uh, meme really got popular there a meme yeah mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you probably seen it it's the one where he's like looking to the laptop and assassins or something and he sees something on the screen <laughs> it's like a bunch of money or something and he he does one of these like Ooh, and he kind of like leans back he's just got that like oh damn that's sweet kind of look on his face. And this, there's this thread, and it's just, it's like a, it's a, it's like a PlayStation Four thread, and there are the most amazing animated gifs I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so elaborate, so clever, and they just keep escalating. And there's like a ton of people in there making sweet gifs. Hardly any of them were not amazing, 
And they were just like, this kept coming, like page after page. I'm like laughing out loud at like midnight on a whatever. And, you know, on NeoGAF, I'm like, how am I having so much fun <laughs> on Redeemed. NeoGAF? And they're like, maybe I, yeah, maybe I misjudged. Maybe. Like there's, everyone's just having a good time, spreading the love. Everyone, this is like a love fest. It was so, it was so great. And then it turns out at the launch event for the PS4, um, there was uh, a lot of Banderas, uh, like what? name drop and, and yeah, like so. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Shu, uh, Sue, what, oh, God damn it, Yoshida. What? Yeah, the, the freaking Sony. Yeah, president. He oh, did president it. President Sony. Yeah, he did. It's Mr. Mr. Sony. Mr. Sony. Yeah. So I cannot. I, oh, I cannot believe I. But I normally would be able to say his name. Like, no more. anyways, he did the Banderas thing from the what? You know, gift. So it's awesome. like, yeah. Did you not watch this? It was. <laughs> No, I was, uh, yeah. anyway, I was on. That was pretty crazy. That like that this community, th- that just, you know, it's like NeoGAF's big. I get that, but just like it's a, it was a thing. It was a thread, and people kept tweeting at you know Sony people and Jeff Keighley and whatnot. And then Jeff Keighley mentioned it. Uh, the pre- Mr. Sony did it. <laughs> God, what's this? <laughs> Someone tell me his place. I think I think you're right, Sue. Su- Never mind. I can't. Yoshida. Suhei Yoshida. Suhei Yoshida. Yes. I think you were right. So I think we just made you. Doubt okay, yourself. you just yeah. All right. So anyways, like that was pretty neat. That's just fun. That's fun stuff. That's fun things. That's good. Like just for once, like there it wasn't like I got you know, I spent a couple of hours on the internet and I wasn't reading about things. It just made me mad. Yeah. Like and that doesn't yeah. happen that often anymore. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Whether it's game sites or Facebook or whatever, we need someone yeah. to protect us from ourselves from going down that those negativity holes. Because I don't know, it just it came to a peak with the console war stuff. So I tried to I unfollowed all. I also re- yeah, I also realized that I unfollowed a lot of people in the last month. I don't know, I don't know what it was. I was just getting worn yeah. out, but worn out. We've just, got tender, big hearts. We're we're, we're big hearted men. We love people and. And we're like big sponges, and we absorb that emotion, so those around us can't feel it, and we cuddle them sometimes too hard, <laughs> and then and we're soft guys. No, you know, I think I think the, the I've ignored the console war things like completely. That is one good thing. My little <laughs> cloud of, of of misery or whatever made me like prevented me from all that kind of stuff because apparently it got super stupid, like mm-hmm. even worse than it has before. I'm sh- yeah, I mean, yeah, I. I getting better at skimming over it. I honestly distract myself with all my just stupid shit that I post to our Tumblr page. Um, I'm usually <laughs> just looking for that kind of stuff. Um, and then um, we are just like... we Somebody in the office, she keeps bringing... They're letting her bring her dog into the office once a week. And so I've kind oh, of... God, what does this country come to? And um, uh, Megan and I have kind of gotten puppy fever. So like I've been watching a lot of like... One of my new habits is like we come home and I'll go through some of the like the YouTube pet videos with Lily, um, and put them up on my, <laughs> put them up on the Chromecast on the big TV, and that's just that's just really fun. And corgi corgi butts, man, corgi butts are hilarious. I just want you to know that. Um, that's what I've learned. Corgi from Corgis, like, oh, cor- oh, I thought I was like, we're strongly that's considering right. a corgi because I know that one will actually fit in this house. I like corgis. They're oh, cute. Oh, and, yeah, and I would eat a corgi. Corgi puppy. I was going to say. Corgi puppies are even ridic- more ridiculous. So, Speaking of animals, I also got to say, Justin Lacey is actually what? two for two on this. You you sent me a link to <laughs> a Reddit thread, uh, Animals Being Bros, and I got oh, yeah. home <laughs> from drinking a ton that night, uh, <laughs> and I that was the first thing I saw, and I looked at that for like <laughs> two hours, and I was like, man, this is, this is, gr- this is good stuff, so... Uh, oh my gosh, animals being bros. Yeah, I kind of want a dog too after looking at that, but I don't want the responsibility. There are a lot of responsibility, yeah. dude. Too even much with work. little butts. Ugh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Little butts, big poops. <laughs> little butts, big poops. Big <laughs> attitudes. Yeah. Big attitudes too. Oh yeah, yeah. Just too much work. Like, oh, this thing's tore up when you get home, or like, ah, uh, you know, this poop here, or it peed on that, or it ate this shoe. Get a cat, and it's like, oh, it's sitting over in the same corner it was when I left. Yeah. And <laughs> it has, and it doesn't need food still. And yep. yeah, so I might like have pooped. Have I wouldn't. And... I wouldn't know. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you... cat, you okay? I'm fine. See you in yeah. a week. What's up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think of uh, Scuffles' post last week, Ethan? 
He made a post on our Facebook uh, page. You know, actually, it's weird. Actually, internet last week was really off, so it, it was funny that came into play. I didn't really tell anybody because again, I was trying to avoid things altogether. Sure. But um, yeah, I can't believe she did that. What a bitch! <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. <laughs> there for a second, if you did, I was kind of worried that my mom thought uh, would think that I was, actually was missing. Oh, so- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it ran through my head. I thought. That, that's weird because nobody had actually commented on it for a while yeah. after it had gone <laughs> up. And I went, wait, I, well, I actually, I mean, I haven't talked to him. I, oh, God, I hope everything's okay. How, like, how, yeah. Oh, well, shit. I mean, and then somebody hit like, so I figured, oh, it must be fine. <laughs> ever, I mean, yeah. ever since he moved out of the country. Aubrey liked it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, ever since he moved out of the country, how would we really know if he was missing? You wouldn't. I could have been, yeah. That, that, it, that, oh, the Gestapo cool. would know? I don't know. Oh. Gestapo? Is that gazpacho? I'm thinking gazpacho. I'm thinking <laughs> of Russian, very different. That's not, Russian no. cold soup. I was like, I hope that that would be a weird thing to do. Um, well, you know, but, but do be weird because I do think we have a ghost, a very tall, lean man who lives in our wall. Uh, we put pictures up on the wall and only one picture what? keeps falling off. And we think he's right up there. And he's like, like, he, he like kind of, oh, you, man. Yeah. You think he's Shit. slender? So, he, well, no, no, no. He's not like slender man. He's a slender man. He's a oh. thin, wayfish like character. Like Sean Bradley. He's in the wall. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I do believe th- this guy. It's like Sean Bradley in my wall. <laughs> Ethan, I'm in your wall. Well, Aubrey was like, Aubrey, Aubrey was trying to nail the, the picture what? back. And she's like, I'm going to nail this in and keep it in there. I go, no, Aubrey, don't. You'll hit him right in the head and then I'll have to fire ghost all day. She goes, <laughs> then, so when I go to work and people ask me what my husband does, I can tell them that he's unemployed and he fights ghosts all day in our, our, our flat. I was like, yeah, that actually kind of sounds pretty awesome. So we, we might try to drive a nail into his head just to see what happens. Brass nail, though, because that will uh, – wait, is brass – brass is something that bad things don't like, right? <laughs> I don't think so. so yeah, uh, you might be thinking of iron. Yeah, probably. Yes, I, iron for sure and salt. Okay. That's – those are pretty much the two guaranteed. I'm going to fill my walls with salt. Yep. Yep. <laughs> the tall um, man. Before we move on to the video games, Ethan, we watched the same movie, so I want to know what you thought of The World's End. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I, I don't need words. I liked that it was... Uh, I mean, it is a conclusion the Coronado trilogy. It wasn't as good as the other two. Um, yeah, not by a long shot, but it, but I liked, but I thought it was an original concept, essentially, in in their way of not having original concepts. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it was fun. It was a fun movie, but like compared to, I mean, I, like Shaun of the Dead, classic. I loved Hot Fuzz. I know a lot of people are kind of you know, uh, not not too sure about. It. I thought Hot Fuzz was great. This one was fine. Um, but it just it wasn't as I, I I didn't laugh like it did in Hot Fuzz. I didn't go yes, you know, mm-hmm. because. That I mean, and and Sean did obviously because you know, but that's been I mean they've both been such a long time ago. But yeah, this one I don't know, it didn't get me as much as I hoped it would. But it was still a good movie. I'd recommend it. But uh, I made I made Aubrey watch it. She was like, "This shit's dumb. What are you What are you doing to me?" So, um, so yeah, I don't know, man. I was a little bit disappointed. I'll be I'll be honest. Uh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. It is the weakest of the three movies, but I still really liked it. Um, no. um, I I I think part of it too was. I watched some of the interviews before, like, like when the movie was hitting theaters and talking about how Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, how they switched up their characters, that Nick Pro- Frost played more of the straight man versus mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Simon Pegg was the fuck up. The I think the, the conclusion was awesome, like the final scene, yeah. and that was just... <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and how they resolved everything was great. And then my favorite part about all three of those movies... Josh. <laughs> Josh isn't here. Um... My favorite part about all three of those movies is when it takes that right hand turn, like because mm-hmm. they all start off pretty serious and like there's some there's some you know some some daily drama going on in these people's lives and then oh shit, um, mm-hmm. and um, while it didn't, I was also thinking back to like there's a there's a there's a fight scene where it all changes in the middle and. Mm-hmm. One thing that really stood out to me in Hot Fuzz was like the random amounts of gore and extreme violence in that movie. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of that in this movie as well, but because the robots have blue blood, it's mm-hmm. not 
near as bothersome. But like, if you think about like yeah. the first dude that he decapitates, I was like, if that was red, that would be really disturbing. But because it's blue, it's kind yeah. of funny. And I, it was, it yeah. Was and they looked fun to fight. Like I remember, like <laughs> when I was watching, I was like, that looks fun to fight. And and it, I was I, I was trying to think like, do you think there was any wrestling influence involved? Because I know that all their movies they have kind of the basic idea, like you know, Sean Dead Zombies, sure Hot Nick Fuzz Frost action did a movie, Rock Bottom at some point, at one point. He they did all kinds of wrestling moves. So I was like, <laughs> okay, so this is their alien invasion wrestling slash movie. wrestle wrestle movie. <laughs> like I don't know, which was awesome. Which I kind of want, like I kind of want to see like a wrestlers versus something now like i just want to see can... a bunch of wrestlers fighting things what was that stupid um shit david arquette movie maybe they can remake that one the uh the wcw movie with diamond dallas page that led oh, to shit. david arquette getting the belt do you know what i'm talking about josh nothing um oh man yeah, I, I remember him it's being terrible. involved it's terrible so they should remake that let's remake yeah that. i would do that or just well there was wrestling. i actually watched a a movie on uh, Netflix. I didn't watch all that. I watched about <laughs> twenty minutes. It, it was it was a wrestling movie. Ready to rumble. Monsters Sorry. wrestling, like uh, like classic monsters. Ray was awful, but it was like that concept. Hey man, I don't know Hollywood. I don't know. Good idea. Josh, you want to give a shout out to anything else before we get to the gaming? Uh, yeah, my new keyboard. <laughs> Can so, you hear shut it? the fuck up about man, that. Man, it's so nice. <laughs> it's so well, clicky. <laughs> It's so good. No, what uh, is it? What is, what's the my model old number? Key, my, well, first of all, my Hold old it up. my old razor. I won't go all the way up there. I don't think. Well, my old uh, razor Black Widow uh, started to take a poop on me, so it was time for a new one. Black and Widow so poop. I got a got, got a Corsair Vengeance K sixty five. It's a ten keyless, yeah. so it's a. I don't know what that means. That that the like the you know the numpad section is not there. So it's a shorter keyboard, so it's kind of nice. It fits here. But anyways, it uses Cherry MX Reds for the mechanical key switches. And I've never used these before, but I went to Fry's, and I just played with all the different keyboards. Oh, okay. and then That's I, what I needed to do. Then I went on, yeah, and then I went online <laughs> to buy the, <laughs> Thanks, uh, I'm good. Was, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's weird because there's no, like, you, when you press the key down, there's no click. It just... You hit the you hit the metal say, <laughs> bottom and that's it. Say K sixty five. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm writing this down for later yeah. for me because I'm I'm in yeah, the market. No, it's uh, man, it's they have a case. Mm, yeah, they have a lot the of the K seventy. I was also looking at, and that was like the full size one, and that was also fantastic. But um, Brown, browns yeah, over really reds. Like the, Matt's trying to sort of uh, fight. yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, the browns have like a little bit of a kind of a bump. As you press the keys down, mm-hmm. um, but the way I type, I'm gonna bottom these things out anyway. So I don't know. The reds are just damn smooth, and I don't make a lot of mistakes when I type. And yeah, <laughs> really, pretty good uh, for gaming and typing. So and next mm, time, though, Corsair makes a good keyboard. Next time, though, I think you should go to Fry's, test them all out, take off, and then head over to a Best Buy, see if they have it, and then price match the Amazon. <laughs> online price yeah, thing walk that out. would have been the smart thing to do yes yeah. yeah. except yeah. i don't go to best buy because i fucking hate i hate best buy so much <laughs> this uh fries is dumb but at least the like there's no employees to be found anywhere <laughs> and you don't have to you don't have to <laughs> usually at least these days it used to start it out it was really bad but these days there there's nobody around you don't have to listen to them spread bs to the other customers so it just makes no, me mad what i, I always have honest, to correct them i kind of miss like, I, I hated Best Buy because of people asking me if they could help me, and I was like, no, you can't. But I kind of miss that now. <laughs> like, I kinda, like I'd kind of like i love to walk into a Best Buy and just like have someone walk up to me and be like, can I walk you around the store? I'll be like, yeah, actually, that would be really <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do you want to come over afterwards? Yeah. yeah. So. Would you like to ride in the shopping cart? Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you some, uh, some misinformation about some of these products <laughs> so you can make an ill-informed decision. I don't believe you, but thanks for being kind of friendly to me, because because here <laughs> for the most part, eh, what if they went the I other did. route and like at Fry's where they literally had no employees and it was just a free for all with they just kind of lock you in there with batches of customers for a couple hours and you have to fight it fight it out over things. Not good. No. So every day is Black Friday. Yeah. Ooh. No, like no, like le- less people than that. It's more just like a 
a survivor type of situation. Not so much like Wait. masses of crowds, <laughs> but like you know, you, you try you to win? you try to I don't know. Not to figure that out, but like you, you want to lay claim to like certain sections of the like you're in control of the keyboards, and so if somebody's trying to like build a computer, they only have access to they've got the cases locked down, but they need to like deal with you to get the input devices, and then you guys got to make deals with the graphics card guys, but you're not getting anywhere without the power strip. Are you trying to rob fries against a rival robbing? No, game? I'm trying to create like a Mad Max scenario within fries. Uh, oh, so, excuse me. It's all right. <laughs> uh, it wasn't that obvious. What's this guy doing in here? Why does he have a? Why does he have shoulder pads on? What's he? <laughs> Should we ask him? Be, no, he'll be fine. He'll <laughs> be fine. Oh, uh, um, let's get to the games. Um, games, huh? Before we get too far, I haven't talked to you guys about the charity marathon. Curious what your highlights were, Josh. What stands oh. out? Just like top top of mind. What's your favorite thing? You know what? Uh, the X-Wing miniatures game with Gifford <laughs> that no one else saw. Was it was epic? so epic. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, I it didn't was get great. To, I was off camera. Pretty much gaming the entire that entire time, but uh, mm-hmm. he obviously he had not played before, correct? Right. Okay. That's correct. But he's he's and, a very intense type of guy and wants to I mean, he would want to know every intricate detail about the rules mm-hmm. and he likes like Star Wars, like, so I could see him really getting yep. into it. And I'm but, assuming that, that's like, what happened. What, yeah, I'd, I'd never played a tabletop game with uh, GIF before. That was He was like a great person to play with. Not just like a great opponent, but just like to play and to teach as well. Uh, he retained everything, you know, from the rules and was interested. Never got – at least he didn't seem to ever get bored with like learning some of the rules. I mean it's, it's the easiest miniature game you'll ever learn to play, but it's still a miniature game. So mm-hmm. it's got more rules than maybe your standard kind of board game, but – um. Yeah, we had a great time. Like he, you know, it was he just genuinely seemed to enjoy the entire thing, you know. And the game went. It was kind of a long game, but a lot of it was just bad piloting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we did, but there was just so many of those like great kind of cinematic moments while we were playing that, uh, you know, the, the those moments I that I kind of live for when you know playing those kinds Can, of games. Did, um, did it top our conclusion yeah, of the what was it the Millennium Falcon versus? I think my, I want to say my tie interceptor. I don't remember which tie I had, but we literally basically yeah. did U-turns and headed straight for each yeah. other and just rolled dice to see who shot who shot who. No, no, our our, you, our finish was a little bit better yours and in mine, except but this one was just had tons of moments mm. like throughout that were just uh, that were really cool and it it just kept going back and forth and and uh, and whatnot. So That's cool. yeah, I, yeah. I, and actually, I'm I'm sitting here thinking like, who? When I, did I? Did he win that game? Or did I? Like, I can't remember who won I think, because it, I think he so won. Back and forth. I, I remember asking. I'm, him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. But like, just the fact that I that's not the thing that stuck in my head is pretty cool. We actually meant to stream okay. that, but Great. that game. I think that game just got so intense it kind of took the wind out of your sails for another round. <laughs> but I'm really yeah, it, it well, it was like it, it it was a couple hours. We had the whole like we were we. We rigged a camera to hang from the ceiling to be able to, like, capture the whole thing. Oh, jeez. So that's oh, next wow. year. Uh, we'll have that's a tabletop delightful. charity marathon and a video game marathon and a game jam. There you and go. A tabletop game jam. Yeah. And a jam making jam. <laughs> and a jam jam. <laughs> <laughs> now that is an idea. <laughs> I don't know how all this ties together, but we finally got jam the, jam. all the local chefs involved in our charity marathon. <laughs> Anything else with no, just, they had to be just moms. <laughs> <laughs> like moms, they're good at bunch of homebodies, grandmas what? maybe. Uh, <laughs> what is it preserve? What is the difference between <laughs> jam, jelly, and preserves? Oh, don't I? Ha- I never remember. I don't even know if there is. I wonder. Is it... All I keep thinking now oh. is like, what if the jam community was as intensely passionate? About picking sides as the video game community. Oh, like a jam wars, well, you man. know. But look, grape versus strawberry is pretty intense, man. I mean, I mean, it, it, yeah. Yes, I got Josh. it. In <laughs> jelly, the the fruit comes in the form of fruit juice. In jam, the fruit comes in the form of fruit pulp or crushed fruit. And in preserves, the fruit comes in the form of chunks in a syrup or a jam. Oh, okay. Got that sorted out. <laughs> yeah, good. Thank God. 
There we go. <laughs> I thought it was going to be something cooler than that, but... Mm, well, mm, whatever. Facts. Well, I thought he was going to choose a different game, Ethan, but what did you think about witnessing some of that Euro Truck Simulator? Um, I was pretty excited because uh, I, I got the impression... Actually, I didn't get the impression. He said that Josh was going to come and visit me in Berlin. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and and I kept, I kept like, <laughs> looking out the window. And, yeah, because when I was tra- playing Euro Truck Simulator, uh, I was trying to find my street. I don't think I ever got close. Like, I, And I don't know if it's... 100% accurate. I'm not sure. I haven't spent that much time in it, but I was just, I really was motivated by that because I was getting a little bit sleepy and I was like, you know, if he's, if he actually comes by by some miraculous event, <laughs> uh, I'm going to need to be on my, on my A game, you know, so I was kind of waiting, you know, kind of looking out the window every now and then to see if I saw a big rig and Josh just smiling face. Oh, I just man. imagine he'd say, get on! And we'd jump in there and I'd be on the radio and twisting knobs and, well, God. radio knobs and it, well, how long on the road. <laughs> If you were just dying, like we could make that happen. What? <laughs> if he had like a terminal Actually, illness, you would, lose you? That, then we, we would make that happen. Well, all right, Ethan, we're about to begin your we're about to begin your treatment. Of, actually. I'm going to go ahead and skip on that. I got a guy who's got a semi-truck. I was going to say, oh, I'm actually <laughs> curious about the procurement of the big rig once we got to Europe. That would be the most important uh, part of the story. Wait. I think it's I think the the license thing is kind of complicated. I was watching some YouTube videos the other day of some people driving some European big rigs, uh, and they were talking about their uh, different like somebody was trying out a new truck, and they were like, "Yeah, I really like to get the license for the whatever kind of thing." And I'm like, "Whoa, do they have like different classes of trucks?" I'm like, "It just it sounded really complicated." Yeah, and I'm not you know, sure. to me, I, I mean, I, I just want a spider you're... truck. They do okay. They do okay in terms of trucking, but I, I'm I'm sorry, America. We, what? I mean, we do trucks. Like if I'm if I'm gonna have <laughs> yeah. a, if I'm gonna have a make a wish, it's gonna mm-hmm. be in America. We're gonna start in Maine, go down the coast, mm-hmm. uh, hit that weird thing that everyone always goes to at Florida, the very last bit of mm-hmm. Florida, the little. I don't know where like this a, is going. It's like a big can, buoy. can we put this on our bucket list? Yeah, yeah, I, I would. Uh, we, how many? We can get one of those big extended cabs on the back of I it. I think we have three trucks. One guy can. <laughs> three trucks? I don't know if I want to drive one. I'd rather be a co-pilot. <laughs> well, okay, then Josh is driving or Coop. Oh, Josh yeah. is driving. Coop is parking. That's what I learned. Wait, how many guys do you want in this semi truck? Let's see how many guys. <laughs> Wait, you need. guys across America. <laughs> oh my God, they're not that expensive. What? Oh, well, oh, I didn't I'm think. Looking you're... at this, I'm looking at a truck for. It's buy it now for eleven nine, eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> like, but it's boom. Dude, I'll on put, it, only up to six grand right now, and it's Kickstarter. Yeah, seventeen hours. Kickstarter. Let's do this. I'm like, oh my now. gosh, we could do it's, this. It's white too, so it's a blank canvas. We can basically know, you do put whatever anything we want on it. Oh my god. The first three, those wraps aren't that expensive. The hey first guys, three backers uh, get to choose our our CB handles. Oh shit! Here we go. Guys, Ten I'm speed doing trans. It. Great truck for the money, ready to drive, sold as is, pickup only. All questions answered. One eight hundred thirty five Volvo. Oh, uh, I'm bidding. Here we go. I'm putting money in. I don't have this much money, but Let's see what happens here. Can Stupid. you ship it to Berlin? Oh, they said no. Yeah. Steubenville oh, Truck Center. Steubenville. Steubenville. Is that in Ohio? Stu- it's Steubenville. Stupid it's in dude. Germany. No, it's not. It's, it's not. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea where that is. I'm googling it right now. This is makes for this is a yes audio. Ver- well, both versions of this are getting. Pre- oh, it's in Ohio. Semi truck detectives. Yeah, let's do. Yeah, I think we can do this, guys. I really do. Um, I like that. Chat. I, I know everybody in chat. If everybody in chat put, you know, at least twenty five hundred into it, we we could get it, and we'd be pretty good at at that. It's good. It sounds like a good oh, deal to great. everybody. We everybody could do involved. this. Yeah. Let's do it, guys. We'll live stream the guys entire across America. Dri- the entire drive. I just want to. I want to sleep in the back of one and feel safe. Oh, uh, I feel like it I would be safe. You'd have to own it to for that to happen. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just want to like. I just want to go drive in. I just want to sleep in it. And you couldn't go to a truck stop and go, "Excuse me, sir, could I, <laughs> could I sleep in the back of your truck? Is that okay?" <laughs> Only if you come with me, boy. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to convince him to give me the keys so okay. I could lock him out, so I would feel <laughs> safe. 
<laughs> oh, night rig adventures. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Let's do that. Get on that. Yeah, Euro Truck Simulator 2, was, that was a good time as yeah. well. Yeah. I just like the fact I didn't notice we switched drivers. That's how similar you and Coop looked in that trucker outfit. <laughs> yeah, did you bring your own trucker hat? Uh, I made one, yes. <laughs> I brought one, and then I took a Sharpie and <laughs> wrote trucks on it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, needed to, I needed to get up. I, did, I need a break or whatever. And so Coop jumps in. I give him the hat. He puts it on. And uh, I go into the game jam room where they have the stream on, and they were kind of like, kind of had their heads down a little bit, like <laughs> you know, they just hadn't noticed. Uh, I go in there, I start to, and I was like, "Hey guys, what's up?" And they're like, "Hey," and I'm like, "I said some somebody said something about the truck driving or whatever," and I was like, "Hey," I'm like, "Wait a minute, if I'm here, who's driving the truck?" It, it was kind of a funny moment. I don't think any of them realized like it was like, "Oh, it's still going." I was there. It was funny. <laughs> it was also four in the morning. <laughs> um, Ethan, you played. I think it's no more room in hell. Is that close? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me about tell that. me about that because I didn't get to watch because I was. I don't know what I was doing. I was in and out of sleep every other ten minutes. So. Yeah, that that came about the time where I kind of towards the end of me kind of relieving you guys for a little bit. Um, yeah, no, no more room in hell. It was. It's a fun game. I really want to play it with friends though because I, I've been well, playing it single player because there's been some server issues. Tell me what it is. Uh, but it's a, like, yeah. it's a, um, it's a zombie, ultra realistic zombie, co-op survival game. Um, not unlike uh, it. it fe- I don't know. I hate to say it feels like Left 4 Dead because it it, it feels like Left 4 Dead because you're moving from point A to point B, mm-hmm. um, and there's zombies involved, but it, it has, you know, kind of random events that are going on, random um, missions or uh, uh, objectives, not missions, um, that you have to complete while you're going, so you're trying to, you know, um, find the key to uh, a door, you're trying to fill a um, tanker up with gasoline, that kind of stuff, and and the thing about it is it, it's, it's pretty tough, <laughs> it's pretty intense, and it actually feels, I think... I, Technically, it, it, it's a little bit rough around the edges, but again, it is a free um, uh, free game. It's um, actually standalone. It was a mod, but it's standalone now. Uh, but I tell you, it really invokes that zombie feeling. That you actually are kind of afraid. Like I never, like when I played Left 4 Dead, I didn't always feel afraid because sure. you were kind of still pretty tough. But this game, you get bit, you're a zombie. I mean, you're going to turn into a zombie, and and you can get a little medicine that kind of prevents that from happening. But it was, it's a pretty intense game. I'm really excited about it. Um, there's also another game that was coming out uh, called um, oh, it's just the same premise. Anyway, it, it's kind of weird because there's a game that's coming out that you actually have to pay for. It's on early access and um, looks very, very similar. So I'm, I'm really, I, I kind of thought zombies were taking a uh, uh, <laughs> how many kind of a break, but they no, they haven't. No. They're just like yeah, we'll, no. we'll still be here, you know. Which I don't know. Like I mean, I think we gonna... shoot terrorists, we shoot robots. Zombies may just be here to stay, and I'm okay with that. We I'm may need to pick fine. your zombie game of the year because you 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 kind of fell for uh, uh, State of Decay as well. And like, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. There's and no I'm reason we really should be for that DLC to come out. Burn out on zombies, but they keep finding little little twists to this genre to keep us playing. Well, I think that's why No More Room in Hell was was intriguing to me and kind of sucked me in, even though, again, like it does, it, it had a lot of issues, especially with getting a server going and, and finding people to play with, but it just, you know, it, it does feel tense, and it does, it reminds me of the uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, you know, those movies where you didn't just run in with a machine gun and kill everything, you were pretty fragile, and you had to be really cautious and I think that's a good thing. That that's like if you're going to do anything, like a lot of these games, I think they go through the transition of let's kill a bunch of zombies. You get your Dead Rising and that kind of stuff. And even State of Decay, you can kill a ton of zombies before they overwhelm you. But with this one, like one on one with a zombie was pretty tough. Like that's always it, there's always a question mark whether you're going to come out of that on top. And I love what the developers have done when reacting to criticism. They have actually kid zombies in the game. Oh. And people gave them shit about that. And you know, kind of said, "Oh, why would you do this? Why would you know why?" And and they and they, you should take it out. You should take it out. And they were getting some pressure. And they came back and they said, "Look, uh, one, what do you think happens to kids during a zombie apocalypse? Do they just disappear. They run. Do away. they just float into the heaven? Like no. Like there's going to be kids around." And they said, "The thing about this game is we want people to react to seeing that." And and when I first 
came face to face with a kid zombie, I didn't I didn't kill it. I, I just stood there and it <laughs> killed me because because you know like humans don't tend to like think oh it's a kid let's yeah. let's take him out you know like and and they were like we want to evoke that emotion and actually they do a really good job in terms That's of cool. doing that with this game. I mean you do feel like that that kind of intensity with it and I think it'll be even better when you've got a bunch of people playing. Uh, not too many people though. I think you can play with up to six maybe six maybe even eight i think like three dudes four dudes is like the perfect amount yeah, I, I think sh- i i think i played the beta of this a while back so you and i played together like a, like a year ago or something like you that you like sent a- me a link to it because it was a mod and then they made it yeah. completely standalone it was so. still a mod at the time and yeah but i remember because I, I i do remember playing this because i remember uh running around trying to like do some objectives and then having trouble doing it because I couldn't get around like a couple of zombies because yeah. like you're saying, like it was really difficult to encounter just even, you know, one or two. Mm-hmm. But uh, I like that idea of it. And then I, f- I feel like kind of zombie you kind of uh, is a similar yeah. kind of game. You know, like I would like if I had to make a direct comparison to something, I would say that, Hey man, I used to play so many, I used to be so hard up for zombie games Mm-hmm. I played every single, and there were a lot of them. Every single mod for Half Life. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't know if it, UT had them or, but like Brain Bread and Zombie Master and like well, They Hunger. You know, like oh, the yeah. one. But all those were just like and now I've now I don't really have a lot of desire, you know, to play them again. And I think maybe I should just pull the stick out of my butt and just dive back into some zombie games. Yeah, because I had so much fun with Left 4 Dead, and I can't dive into these games. I got a stick in my butt. Well, I, well, I think, <laughs> I think that there was a period of time where there was no zombie games, so any zombie game that came out, people jumped on. And then there was a period of time where a bunch of zombie games came out, and they just had zombies in them. There was nothing different about it. It might as well have been, you know, any enemy. But now I feel like they've kind of come into this. Uh, they're actually staying true more to zombies. You know, they're trying to say, you know, we're either going to do a survival game where you know, you're looking at the DayZ and those kind of games where like zombies, it's not easy to contend with them, um, or you're doing like the kind of the simulation type game. Because um, I've been playing a little Project Zomboid as well, and that kind of thing. It mm. is like even that game, like you are running away from zombies more so than you're killing zombies, which I, I kind of like that. You know, like I like I like to feel tough in a game, but I also like to feel really fragile. I want to feel like like if, if I was in this situation, I don't think that as much as I'd love to think that I was going to grab a chainsaw and plug it into the socket where my hand used to be, um, I kind of have a feeling that I would play it pretty safe. And these guy, games kind of give you that kind of feeling. And, and I think that's better. It's a little bit more authentic, especially with, you know, zombie games have kind of gotten a bit, I don't know, a little, a bit, a little bit sour, you know, as of late, so. Yeah, I was just, I was, I was just surprised where, that it kind of came out of nowhere and was still significant enough to keep talking about and people actually enjoying it. Like, I, I don't yeah, know. I keep waiting yeah. for that, oh, it's just another zombie game and we completely ignore it, but it seems like every one of these has something worth talking about. Did, oh, yeah. pro- did they polish up Project Zomboid? How's that coming along? It is. Uh, it's it's coming. It's coming along. It's in uh, Steam Early Access yeah. at this point. Uh, yeah, I th- yeah, it is. Um, at least until they lose it, their laptop I, again. It, it's well. <laughs> I, I think they've they've learned a lot. I mean, I mean, if that hadn't have happened, who knows where? I mean, it would <laughs> probably be done by now. But um, you know, it, it's it is moving in a really good direction. It's a completely different game. It is not for everybody. I think there's a lot of people that'd be like, uh. Oh, this isn't really, you know, this is too simmy. Because, I mean, it is. You get sick, you get depressed, all this kind of stuff happens. But I like, again, the atmosphere of that game is is great. I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, I, I think it's unmatched in terms of zombie games. Like, when it comes to a survival simulator, that game has it in spades. Because you, I mean, even the sound of zombies outside your house frightens your character. And you have to deal with that. You don't just sit like, oh, I'm, I'm safe in a house because they break into the house and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's... It's moving in a really, really good direction. I would recommend people that don't have the patience to wait on it for right now, um, unless you're okay with buying it and then just you know playing it later on down the road. But if you've got kind of you know a tight budget, give it a little bit of time. But I think it's going to be really cool, especially if you like sim games and zombie games. Have you? Have there, the, this, this, okay, go. On. I was going to change the subject a little bit. Oh no, no, I was just saying that I, I think it's pretty impressive that a bird's eye view kind of. A game like that can feel so like oppressive. Yeah. Like just yeah. yeah, that's what I got out of that back 
way back when, but I haven't played oh, it yeah. in like a year or so. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Yeah. Have either of you played the the Double Fine? What was their space base space? What was it called? No. Right. Oh, uh, space base CF nine. Yeah. Yeah. I've been holding off. It seems like mm-hmm. really early access, so I've been holding off. But kind of curious to see how that if that uh, lured you guys in. That yet. Looks awesome. Yeah. It it will. I I have too many games in alpha just sitting here. I don't want to keep doing it yet. Yep. But that game looks uh looks great. Like I I I've kind of wanted a space game like that. You know where you kind of got that. Everyone says Dwarf Fortress. I think that's really inaccurate. Dwarf Fortress is going to be really tough to come uh, to to kind of like uh, cop or um you know copy I guess. Mm. Um. But uh. It, Space man, no one, no one's touching space in terms of that. We got space combat and that kind of stuff, but um, uh, I think this will be this will be really cool. And it's double fine. Holy shit, they don't usually fuck things up. Like they 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 have it for a while, so um, that excites me a lot, actually. Yep, I'm, I'm excited too. Um, I think I should probably jump in with the PS4 launch stuff because yeah, that yeah. So, PC games are the greatest. Ugh. I'm this was kidding. weird <laughs> compared to like <laughs> us running around with our heads cut off last year trying to track down a Wii U. This is a weird launch <laughs> launch for me because it's the first time I've ordered one online. And uh, so, and the funny thing is, uh, so there was a Colts game Thursday night that didn't end till about eleven eleven thirty. So I was kind of out and about anyway, and I could have like gone over to a store and picked one up at midnight. There were, I mean. As long as you got in line, there seemed to be plenty around. Um, but I actually, so I actually went over to Meyer about eleven forty-five, and because I hadn't bought a game yet, because I was so indecisive, and um, you know, I walked in, and there's like you know the the lawn chairs that are in the aisles, and like a line of people, and so I just kind of <laughs> walk up the front. And I'm like, can I just buy a game? I, I don't I don't need the system. And he's like, yeah, but I think I kind of got to give you a ticket and make you wait in line. I was like, ah, that's fair. So I ended up driving. Driving back down to the south side, and it was like twelve fifteen, and then I went in and bought a. Ended up picking up Killzone, Shadowfall, and and I thought I was gonna get Assassin's Creed. I thought I was gonna get Knack. I thought I was, and then I ended up with FIFA. So, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> so weird. Whoa. Somewhere along the lines, I started talking sports games. I have a couple friends that I know will play sports games with me on my PlayStation. Uh, friends and it's been five years since i played a soccer game i like random soccer games ended up with fifa so uh i do think i should have probably gotten nba 2k14 because that seems to be a v i don't know the one that can technically show off the next gen a little bit more but anyway Mm -hmm. so those were the two games i i picked up in stores i was still like the only game i was super excited for was rezo gun which was free to playstation plus members 15 bucks otherwise uh, I'm, you know, um, super Stardust Defender, basically. That game is fan-fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. It uh, it took me a while to get used to it. It I think it is a terrible game to stream. Any of those arcade games, unless you're, like, really, really awesome or trying to achieve something specifically, I think they're terrible to stream. Uh, so I kind, of, I kind of felt bad there, but it was certainly pretty looking because, I don't know, the PlayStation 4 seems to, like, Everything that Sony pushes about its power, they just seem to show how many objects on screen it can render at once. So when anything blows up in that game, you know, it's just fireworks covered in voxels. And it, it's just, it's kind of crazy. But um, um, if any of you, if you've ever played Defender, they did, they kind of updated the, the interface a little bit where you, you know, can infinitely go to the left and the right because you're basically going around this ring and it's constantly throwing guys at you. And then there are humans that... <laughs> That are around to uh, um, uh, to rescue, and I could not figure out what the hell unlocked the humans uh, for like the first 20, 30 minutes I was playing. So it wasn't making much sense, but it was really, really fun to play. Um, you know, one of the easily one of the best twin stick shooters out there in a while, and uh, um, highly recommend it. And then I have since played it offline and started to kind of understand the mechanics a little bit more. But yeah, that that thing is that thing is awesome. So. Mm. Um, Please, yeah. There is no reason not to check that out if you don't. If you have a PS4, um, I did you real- try any of the uh, uh, free to play stuff? I like played Warframe, War Thunder. I loaded up Warframe. War Thunder's not out yet. It'll be out by the end of the month. They oh. missed it. They're trying to. Oh. They're going to hit their European launch date or something. So, um, 
But uh, yeah, I was looking forward to actually trying that one out on the, um, uh, with the controller. But um, but they, you can use mouse and keyboard actually, yeah, and yeah, joysticks. So they have not, joystick support as well. It's, That's crazy. I mean, it's kind of like they do a lot of those little like things you wouldn't think of, right? Like everything just kind of works with the system. Like I'm really happy with the hardware. Really happy with the interface. It is all about. I mean, it really is all about the games. There's not much else going on. Like, I think some of the Xbox One features are awesome. Like just the the options that you have, but there's just something kind of I don't know safe and cozy to just log in the screen and just get to the games. And um, I I really like I, I like I like the start. I still don't think there's a reason unless you're kind of crazy like me or um, just you know really really into things right now. Wait on these consoles. Wait, there's no reason to get these games till the till the spring. There's no system selling games out there. Um, but um, I really enjoyed my time with it anyway. Um, the other big game I spent the time with was Killzone Shadowfall. Mm. Um, I played a few hours of Killzone 2, but that's essentially my only interaction with the series, and I did not like it. I thought the shooting was just weird. And apparently they fixed that in Killzone 3. Um, so the shooting actually feels really good in Shadowfall, and I really like the setting. Um, I'm not too far in it. I beat the like the first two missions uh, the game actually starts out, you play as a little kid. I was just thinking about this when you talk about the zombie kids and um, and that sort of thing. And uh, you start as a kid, and whenever, you know, you're just kind of following your dad around and shit's going crazy in the city. And, you know, anytime they give me control of my character, the first thing I'm going to do, if you're telling me to go right, I'm going to go left. And I'm just going to start looking around. And, you know, dad takes off, and I start looking around. And within about 10 seconds, they killed me. They killed the little kid. Like, <laughs> yeah, I died multiple times as the little kid, and it was it was kinda, that was pretty funny. <laughs> it was kind of cracking me up. <laughs> um, and then um, but when the, when the game actually got going, it was like it's more of an open world shooter than I than I thought it would be. Oh, really? Like I guess not like not like a full open world, but more like kind of a uh, like a battleground, kind of like Halo style, where you're just kind of plopped into a big area, and they're different you know, corners to go to, and, um, you know, you use the environment against your enemies and, and just kind of can have more of a tactical approach to your your fighting, and I, I really dug that about the first mission. Um, and it looks it looks great. Like, they, this is probably the closest thing they have to actually tout the power of the system. So um, I bought it, you know, kind of as the exclusive kind of next-gen showpiece. I don't give a shit about the story. I heard that... It has pacing issues later in the game, but really enjoying what I've played so far. The, it's got a couple wicked guns that, I don't know, the the big gun that you have kind of has this long-range mode that when it shoots a guy, it almost hits him with a force blast, too, and kind of, like, splatters them a bit, and it's really satisfying, and um, no, I'm really uh, really up on that game. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious, by the end of your time with that, whether or not you... Dig it because I, I always get this impression with Killzone is there are always the games that come out they look good, people play them and no one hates them but no one really loves them either. Yeah, you know what I mean. I can, are there, and so it's it's strange to me that there's four of them. Yeah, you know? are there like I just Killzone fans like have you yeah. guys have you okay you've talked to one thing. yeah huh can you bring them on as a guest <laughs> I like to talk to them because I just and they're I'm, out there because I've never I've never played the games um just because they just didn't I just I guess I just never ran into them, but I never, like, whenever I see a review or people talk about them, like, they look great. They're kind of like the first generation, like, look at us, and then, you know, not, I mean, not a whole lot happens, I think all seems. The, I think all these launch games besides Resogun are pretty damn for, forgettable, but they're yeah. also not, there's, you know, I talked to, Mac seems to be getting the most, like, negativity around it, but I talked to Cole a little bit. He's been playing it. He's He said it's fine. He said it's like playing a... Basically, a PlayStation One mascot platformer, but it's harmless and yeah. can, kids will like it. And um, so there's there's nothing like broken or egregious out there. And uh, you know, e but these are launch games. Like no matter how dressed up some of them might look. Um, um, and um, the the one that I'm really curious about, and I don't know if I'll end up getting it on the on the PlayStation Four, was Need for Speed Rivals. Is actually sounding pretty pretty good and looked to be kind of flashy that was one i was on the on the fence about um fifa 
I don't really want to say much about it other than it was really fun to kind of... I played that game like 2 in the morning, and I don't understand soccer at all, but I really like playing soccer video games. And the way it just kind of threw me in there was kind of kind of weird, but um, we had some fun on the stream with that one. And the only next-gen thing I can see is the grass and the ha- their hair. Everything else seemed to be just kind of, you know... Oh, what about the sweat? 1080p. Not really... Not didn't really feature the sweat. Killzone had some like oh, wow. zoom in on zoom in on the soldier's face and see some sweat moments, but uh, not so much in FIFA. And then uh, I, I guess oh. like there's more animation frames to all the stuff too. But um, oh, and I didn't mention um, with uh, Warframe, I was curious because I've got you know I've put some time into my PC character, and they aren't cross-platform compatible. But you can, if you play it on the PC, you can copy your profile to the PlayStation basically and just start from mm-hmm. there but they won't they won't stay in sync. So oh, okay. um so yeah, I think I'll that's stick cool. I think I'll stick with the PC just cuz that's where we've been playing it and I know uh, more Warframe players but I'm really psyched that I think that game will get a uh, a good audience because why wouldn't people play it uh, on the PlayStation yeah. 4 cuz there's really it doesn't have much competition right now and so I'm hoping that it gets a little bit of a following there. Um, yeah, that'd be great. And then I'm, uh, I'm really interested to see what Planet Side Two looks like on PS4 when that launches. Yeah, that will be curious. That could be that could be pretty great. I and I, I haven't I haven't played it recently, but uh, apparently their uh, the optimization stuff that they've been working on to make it like look and run really great on the PS4, those are all those optimizations getting patched in the PC version. Oh, I saw that. I saw so, those notes. I didn't yeah. I didn't connect those dots though. That's people were pretty excited about that. Um, Mm-hmm. Wait, it's supposedly made a huge improvement. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, it's it makes me want to re-download that game. I haven't played that game for a really long time, so. I, I, mm. I, if that so, game sticks around, I'll play it like every six months. It's a good time. Um, like, yeah. And then after seeing some people messing around with it, even our guys, uh, Andy and Jason, were playing playing with the PlayStation camera a little bit before I went on, and um, I ended up buying the camera because the little. Oh, well, the the ARG is it ARG? Yeah, the ARG robot game um, with uh, with the camera is pretty fun, and and I and Lily got a big kick out of it, so I bought that for um, because the ga- the system comes with the playroom, which is just a couple demos that work with the camera, and I don't know. I still remember all the Wonder Book stuff, and like, yeah, it's kind of cheesy, but I think I think Lily will get a kick out of that stuff, so. Um, yeah, the cam- I picked up the camera. I got the last one that d- the next day. It was uh, starting to creep off the shelves, but that stuff works really well. It was really cool. Um, I mean, it's it, it's cool from a tech demo standpoint. But um, so we had fun with that. Um, cool. I'm trying to think what else is going on with yeah. The thing was just surpri- it was just weird not to be a part of the the actual midnight launch a little bit, but I still got to kind of witness it. And I I feel like I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna get an Xbox One this week, but I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and just see what's going on, just because I don't know I like that atmosphere. I like to kind of watch people during the console launches. It's 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 interesting to me. So, um, yeah. I don't know any other random. Oh, I was gonna say the. So I've been streaming from my computer for the PlayStation Four. The other guys have been using the app, um, and it, it worked pretty well as far as just getting it up. It's it's easy to stream, but it doesn't. Uh, archive any of the streams from the PlayStation 4 um, on the Twitch channels. So that's been that's been a little little weird. I think they'll enable it later after you know everybody kind of gets up and going. Mm-hmm. But um, it's kind of neat to see. This will be an introduction to live streaming for a lot of people. And um, I don't know where it's going to go, but it, I think it'll essentially get people interested in it, and they might try to like you know get some higher end equipment if they they get into it. Otherwise, you're just going to see a bunch of uh, Shared videos on Facebook for a while. I, what 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 didn't Twitch do some kind of uh, or kind of force some people to put more like they have some standards now, don't they? Doesn't Twitch have standards that they put in? <laughs> yeah. Um, they've they've kind of modified some stuff. I I don't. I mean, I I I think it's I I don't know. Twitch connectivity is fine, but I. I I don't know if it's gonna be good for Twitch. I don't think that I mean that easy to. I think one of the good, one of the hurdles about creating anything, and this sounds really maybe a bit pretentious, but I, I don't I don't care too much about it, um, is that you know that 
the barrier of entry to stream, you know, on the PC, uh, it doesn't seem like too big of a deal, but for a lot of people, they're not able to do that. But with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, it's going to be pretty easy. And I think there's some people that don't need to be on the internet. I think there's a lot of really popular sure, people I mean, on the internet. Yeah. And it's it's difficult it's difficult to upload stuff to YouTube if you don't know what you're doing. And like to film it, edit it, do all that kind of stuff. But now there you can just stream I mean, it right off. So I don't I don't it's know. It's like any it's like other people that put stuff up on Facebook. Yeah, it's like any other you know, any, any other network kind of taking off on the internet, like, yep, it's going to be really, really noisy out there for a while, and there's going to be even even more shit, and it's going to take more work to kind of rise the top, but like I said, I think people that actually enjoy it and start taking it seriously will realize um, that they'll need more hardware if they want to take it uh, beyond yeah. what the PlayStation 4 can do. I, I think I, you're going to you're gonna get plenty of people that uh, also die will, will be discovering it for the... Yeah. Well, yeah, but there'll be a play of people that uh, find it super novel and they'll use it to stream and watch, and the, and so there's like going to be an audience kind of ready for people that do want to try it. But I have a, but it's a, just today at work, um, my boss was talking about he just got his PS4 over the weekend was playing it and he'd never even heard of Twitch before. Yeah. Uh, he's not like super hard. He l- loves games, but just like his like couple of sports games and doesn't really branch out too much. I don't think and. He was saying, he's like, yeah, I got, I'd never heard of it before, but uh, yeah, just a couple clicks and boom, I'm like streaming online. And he's like, yeah, and I, I uh, called my buddy. And I was like, hey, want to watch my stream? He's like, no. So I turned it <laughs> off. <laughs> I mean, that was it. <laughs> like, so okay, well, he's not gonna do that again, right? So, <laughs> you know, he, it was he could do it. It was that easy. And if he, if somebody wanted to watch, like his buddy wanted to see what something looked like, they could easily share it. So, yeah, I, I think that's like fun. underestimating that. That side of it, as far as the people that just flat out hadn't heard of it, and now it's going to be in their face. That share button's right there. It's mm-hmm. going to open up at least a new, a whole new view, viewing audience too. And I, I hadn't even thought about mm-hmm. that as far as just if I could be be on my PS4 and actually watching the other stuff rather than through the computer. So mm-hmm. um, the, be, the browser's not too bad either for watching uh, live streams and stuff too. Yeah, so people are saying you can watch giant bomb live streams. You probably, I'm sure, you know, obviously this would work. Yep, it's pretty neat. Cool. Ah, I think that's it for for the PS4 stuff. Oh wait, what's up? But wait, you you have a Vita, right? I do have a Vita. Did you remote play? Not yet. I actually like when I got the Vita, and I surprisingly found out that they do the remote play stuff on the PS3. I kind of had that moment already. Like, you know, I'm not. When I when I got the Vita and I was playing The Last of Us on my Vita, I had that whole "what the fuck is going on" type of type of moment. All of a sudden, being able to play Killzone on it isn't. Th- I was more interested in just playing the games, but I'm I'm excited about the Vita connectivity. I think they're gonna they're gonna sell some Vitas. I want a Vita TV thing or the whatever the thing's called, and please announce that for the United States. But um, can you stream while you're? I don't know. I'm mess- I'll, mess- I'll mess with it soon. I just wasn't. That wasn't the first thing on my mind. I just wanted to play the games, and I kind of knew what it would feel like based on a PlayStation Three experience. But get a Vita. Could you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am excited though. Through solving the the streaming problem, I'll be streaming more PlayStation Three stuff coming up too. So I've got a lot of PlayStation Three games to get through. Damn. Um, Josh, what what game stands out to you? What do you want to talk about? Uh. You know what I want to? Uh, well, there's really two here, but I want to say first of all, X Rebirth just came uh-huh. out. Uh, uh-huh. You guys know the X series, like this kind of hardcore space sim. Mm-hmm. Ethan, have you played any of those? Uh, that sounds like X three. Yes. No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. Okay. No, no, no. Um, I always love the idea of those games more than I do play playing them. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll get myself hyped up, reinstall, launch it. Play for an hour, uninstall it, and I did that four or five times with the last one. And this one looked to—I've been watching it for a while. It looked like it was going to be different. It's going to be easier to get into. It had a cockpit view, which I, for whatever reason, I enjoyed so much. And just like I love being in space. You guys know this about me: space and trucks. And uh, <laughs> and it's somehow they made just like the most gorgeous. Uh, and interesting space environments in this new game. It's a, it's it's really like a uh, kind of a privateer, you know, elite 
Frontier Elite kind of kind of game. So you have your ship and you fly around doing trading and doing missions and being a mercenary and a pirate and whatever you know whatever you want to do. There's a storyline and or you can just do free roam mode. Uh, did I mention how gorgeous this game is? Holy crap! <laughs> it looks just really good. Absolutely, just blew me away. Everything else about the game is unbelievably awful. Just <laughs> the worst. You, you, they, they, they actually put in. So you, you actually get up out of your chair and you walk around like you, on foot. Like you go to land on a space station. But everything about that is clunky and terrible. Every single NPC is wooden, and uh, I don't even care that they're that they look like they're you know from the 90s. Like it's the worst writing and delivery of that terrible writing. It's so 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 bad. Uh, like just I didn't have any fun. Like well, shooting stuff was pretty fun. Like I, at times, but just <laughs> at, at times. <laughs> yeah, but God, just un. Just, it's yeah. Unfortunately. Right now, maybe they'll it'll get like uh, upgraded with some amazing patches. But right now, X Rebirth is a definite pass. <laughs> well, that was what I'm I'm really curious about with that game because I looked at it and I said that looks really cool. And I've more so I mean I've I've gotten a lot more interested in space as of late. And um, you know, I really like FTL. So I'm like I want to take it mm-hmm. to the next level now. I want to get into space. But then I, I'm always wondering if if issues like the issues that you described don't sound too patch. Able, patch up. Well, like, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, yeah. Aspects of it that, that I'm just like, well, yeah, because because they came out, and they apologized, it, and they were like, ah, you know, we got some stuff to work on, but that stuff to work on is different from like, uh, you know, huge swaths of like shit, you know, like. Well, just, yeah, I, I I forgot to mention it's also buggy and runs like shit. Oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> so I those patches. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that part. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, when you when you turn the graphics down like there's a they don't have a lot of settings but there's one it's like shaders and that's like the only besides resolution <laughs> and like uh draw distance Take that's seven. it it's like shaders like oh that's i guess that's the only encompassing term now for like all this stuff and uh it's got low medium and high and as soon as i put that on low i went from like 20 frames a second to like 100 but oh, there was like there was nowhere in between it was like it, medium and high didn't really make a difference so uh and it didn't look like that much worse, but um, you gotta you have to turn on some anti-aliasing in that game, though. That's for sure. Otherwise, stuff kind of at a distance, like there's ships coming at you at angles, and you see like uh, you know like a lightning, like a cartoon lightning bolt drawing instead of a line. It's it's bad. But <laughs> anyways, it, but, but boys, oh, it's is it pretty when it's when you turn up the candy? So there was that, um, and I want to say too. Uh, I finally started to play Gunpoint. Mm-hmm. I need to play this. For and the awesome pants. Hot damn, that is a good game. Oh shit, like, oh, yeah. that is. Wow, yes, <laughs> uh, like crazy, crazy cool. Yeah, uh, it's a puzzle game, but just everything around it, like, is just so charming. And it's got that detective noir thing going on, and but also some like I mean you have to execute these these crazy plans that you form as the game goes on. It gets harder. You're you're just breaking into buildings, rewiring all the uh, electronic stuff, and trying to steal files off laptops and stuff like that. But but there can be a little violence, and you can you know there's traps and little things you can do, and and that stuff's fun. Um, more to kind of get you out of jams, like an old school Metal Gear Solid or something, you know. Like you can't just go running around blasting everybody, but Snake knows how to use a gun, that kind of thing. Um, and the writing is great; yeah. it's hilarious. I love it. Uh, obviously, you know Tom Francis is he, pretty good at writing. So, but just I, you know, you never know how that's going to translate to hmm. fiction. And so clever, like the the lady who just couldn't type real good on her phone it's like you're talking to people on via text messages and sometimes it should like it's like there's this one lady she's just like sorry not my phone i can't figure out how to do capital letters <laughs> like, was, like, that's brilliant it was it was brilliant i love it. yeah it's but it's getting hard I've, i'm also not smart enough to play the game did you finish oh. it Ethan? <laughs> yeah yeah i did i oh i finished that in a setting yeah, I, feel I, like, was, I know aaron played it, it too and it, i feel like we glossed over it i need to do i need to play this Oh, it is! It is! It is worthwhile. Yep. It is it, 
one of the more original games I've played for quite some time, actually. Like, it just, it really, hmm. and I mean, the, the puzzle elements, I mean, it's difficult, but it's not, I think one of the most genius aspects of it is it, it'll save your game at like certain intervals of time. So like, you know, you could, you know, when you die, you can rewind back to six seconds ago or two seconds ago or 10, you know, and, or from the beginning. And I mean, there was, uh, there was a lot of thought put into it. I, I really hope that there's more that comes out of it. I know there was user created levels. You can do that kind of stuff, but um, the writing is what, you know, in, in my review on that, um, I said, you know, like I, I want more of that, that, scenario like i want more writing like the puzzles are great that was a lot of fun but oh man like the little little morsels he didn't have i mean you don't have to do that like the game could have been fine on its own but that little bit of extra effort is what catapulted it over the top for me that's awesome that's awesome putting it on the list because that all those games that i'm not going to get done this year that i have about a month to finish before we talk about good god i don't yeah fuck we have a month i need, i still need to play bro I have brothers, and I probably need to play some Assassin's Creed. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, that's those are my two bef- like gotta plays before the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. I've given up on some of them. I'm like, I, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'll get yeah. there, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. It's still holding out hope. Well, Everybody has to at least play The Last of Us and Bioshock Infinite. So. We can finally do our Bioshock Infinite cast another time, but I did finish it, so. Oh, hey. oh okay, good. Wow, yeah, there we go. And then I went to the wiki and, and read what happened, so. <laughs> like, oh, thinking, oh, yeah. what the fuck just happened? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was, I thought it was like, especially with some of the teases from the DLC, I thought I knew where they were going with it. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. <laughs> nope. it, was, uh, it was, it was awesome. I definitely, um. You know, I didn't. I didn't. I, I definitely played it for the story. I was surprised at you know as as I played it on a normal too. So I'm I'm kind of curious about. I had a better experience on hard as far as the gameplay goes. No, I was just, I was just mowing well, through shit. So, but like they went out of their way. Is, yeah. Before the game came out to like promote all of their character designs and all the different inhabitants of Columbia, and I was kind of surprised at how little they used like. Uh, you know, like the handyman, like he doesn't show up as much as I in, uh, thought he would. And um, you know, that game is all about it's all gunfights too. Like you think of the different types of enemies that were in, in Bioshock, that kind of that kind of surprised me. But but it was but man, but when it all comes together, when you get like a really good area with where you can skyhook around the land and like those those were pretty exhilarating fights at the same time. So mm-hmm. I really really yeah. enjoyed it. S- super happy that I went back to. Uh, finish it and yeah that that story and just like the subtle changes to elizabeth like how her character grows and learns and changes um throughout that game is a pretty it's just amazing it is Mm -hmm. it is it is wonderful um and uh so i need to get a little bit more space up to see where it really lands but um but yeah it's everything i could have really hoped that game uh could be back back when it came out so uh now i'm excited to play the dlc have either either of you guys touched it uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not too. I. It seems. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I need to go back to Rapture. Sure. Like I don't. I feel like I, that's concluded. I'm done with that. I've moved on. Like I couldn't even get through Bioshock too because I was like, I, you know, I've had enough of this. Um. So I. I mean, it looks interesting, and, and I know everybody was gaga over it, but it doesn't seem very long either. It's like an hour long, I think, is what people have said. So. I don't know. I may wait on that one. Yeah, actually. maybe I mean, you wait I'd like to check it out. All of the Same pieces here. are out too. Yeah, and I have to remember too. Like I had a huge Bioshock Infinite high, and that was months and months and months ago. So at this point, you know, I'm forgetting what. I mean, Josh and I were going gaga over it. Yeah. Uh, you know. And then I and came in. Ch- chatting before a podcast, and then you came in and you you ruined it. Uh, no, but but uh, <laughs> so I need to I need to realize uh, again because that that is one of those ones that we talked about this a few weeks ago, but. In terms of talking, you know, game of the year stuff, like I, I need to remember that because a lot of other games have come out since then, and, and it's very easy to wash over that. And I think that it has a lot of competition. Don't get me wrong, but uh, that was one that I was sure it was like, oh, this is it. This is this yep. is game of the year. That, that and Blood Dragon, obviously, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it definitely was because it, it was it was there was just a lot of good stuff to it. That was a well executed game. Yep. I can't wait to have the dis- like the game of the year discussions. Just to get my head back into 
like some of the good feelings I had playing so many games this mm-hmm. year because it's yeah. been I'm so detached from I'm even from the Last of Us now it's like it's out of my head now so I'm not thinking about it. but I also hey, don't have stream. that desire to like <laughs> jump back into it yet uh, but so just having those conversations I will uh, say about those again just to remember what all I played this year is going to be fun I'm not sure if you play the Last of Us that you're necessarily going to have good feelings. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know where Man. the ending's going, but like, you know, I remember from what I've played to this point, I can only play it in small doses because it takes a it takes an emotional toll on a man to play that game. But are, are we going to give uh, Troy Baker some kind of achievement award? No, I think he get, Yeah, he definitely gets the Nolan North Award this year. So, man, he's just killed it this year. Um, yeah, so some behind the scenes stuff of him and the the gal that played Elizabeth, like. Cordy like, Draper, yeah. Um, like doing the music scene where they where he picked up the guitar in the mm-hmm. game, and like and and Levine had to tell them to stop being so good. <laughs> like you're you sound like All professional right. musicians, and the characters aren't professional musicians, so you need to kind of fuck up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as, yeah. So I'll be live streaming Last of Us is the the next game on my list. I'll be I'll be juggling. The Last of Us, and when it depresses me too much, I'll jump to Super Mario 3D World. So that's my that's my upcoming plan. Um, also, while I have you guys here, I played Deadfall Adventures yesterday. Uh, I know it was. I think you have it on your wish list, Ethan. Josh, do you know anything about this? I don't. Out, came out of nowhere. So it's made by Farm Fifty One, which are the guys that remade Painkiller, which some of those guys worked on the original Painkiller. And they basically wanted to make an Indiana Jones game. And so it's a first-person shooter, adventure-style, uncharted Indiana Jones wannabe, but like with the worst writing and just most predictable plot line, and just so many like so many generic tropes in it that I love it. I fucking love it. <laughs> That's not what I thought you were gonna say. No, it is like it's janky, it's but it's 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 just, I had a lot of fun with it. I've only, you know, I only played a couple hours of it, but um, what actually kind of sealed it for me was so you've got, you know, you got your puzzle, your your puzzle solving stuff, which is which is fine. The environmental environmental puzzles are fine, but when like supernatural stuff started coming up, you, I kind of made fun of it because I was picking up these treasures and it says, you know, you use these treasures to up, like, upgrade your flashlight. I'm like, really? Like I have a magical flashlight. And it didn't really hit hit me because I didn't have the flashlight yet in the game. And then like these mummies show up, and right as the not this Nazi guy gives you a flashlight, there are Nazis in the game. That's really the other part that kind of clinched it for me. Oh yeah, um, he gives you a flashlight. I still don't know why he was on my side at the, that moment. But then you like fucking first person shooter Alan Wake combat all of a sudden, like where you shine the light on the guy until they're weak and then shoot him. And I thought that was kind of cool, but, um, I don't know where it's going from there, but it's like you start off in kind of like desert pyramids, tomb raiding. And then, um, the, the second chapter takes place in Antarctica. So it's going to do some globe trotting and the characters are just like, you know, this, this guy is a Nathan Drake wannabe, but I, he has an awesome beard and just terrible, great lines. And, I don't know. I might have just been in the mood for it too. It could be awful, but uh, it was it was charming the hell out of me. Uh, highly likely. It looks <laughs> just like their that terrible shooter they came out with in '09, the Necrovision. <laughs> like it looks exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> Same animations for the dual pistols and all that. Looks pretty bad. So I'll put up I'll but, put up the game curious but, video of that later this week. But I was I was stoked <laughs> to jump in and try that game out. So, um. We're running a bit long, but Ethan, you got a couple games on your list I want to talk about. So, can you can you yeah. t- can you tell me about XCOM? Yeah. So XCOM Enemy Within, which I've just that was the that was the news from Gamescom that that carried me into September. I was so pumped for what they were adding to it. Um, for those not in the know, XCOM Enemy Unknown came out last year, and this year XCOM Enemy Within came out. It's it's, it's an expansion. Um, those getting on, on console, it's, it's actually just you're going to get an uh, enemy unknown kind of expanded copy. So you got you basically rebuy the game, but it's okay. Don't complain about it. Everyone's complaining about it. Don't complain about it. It's worth it because it adds some badass shit to the game. Um, 
it adds a resource called meld, which allows you to genetically engineer soldiers, uh, give them better stats and different powers and that kind of stuff, or to create gigantic robots, which are fucking awesome. The greatest thing ever. Um, <laughs> they excite me so, uh, so much. It all. Um, it, it's just, it's absolutely incredible. And 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 to, at first, I was kind of like, okay, twenty nine ninety nine for an expansion. Uh, man, what are they going to add to it? They have added a ton. They've added a bunch of new maps. So, I mean, it's really unlikely you're going to see the same map every time you play. They've added, um, uh, when you shoot down UFOs, they don't just crash in fields now. Sometimes they crash into a city. So that's awesome. Um, you know, a couple new enemies, uh, a couple new, like, kind of little side missions, uh, and this whole separate tech tree uh, involving the robots and the um, uh, the gene genetic engineering that kind of stuff. So basically, you can you can create all these crazy strategies. I mean, I mean, it, it's the sky is the limit. Like, I felt like with Enemy Unknown, there was a you know you could be you could kind of expand upon your your strategy and kind of do a couple different things. But for the most part, you had kind of a standard approach you took to to levels. This one, like. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Like for instance, the ro- the robots um, kind of act as bullet sponges, so they can just they can't stand in cover, so they're just right in the open. But man, they've got a one punch knockout. Like if you get close to an enemy, you can take it out. They've got a Gatling gun. They've got flamethrowers, grenade launchers, all kinds of crazy shit. Um, and then with the genetic engineering, like you've got guys that can regenerate health while they're waiting. So I mean, that's a really useful um, skill. So I mean, it's really tough to decide which one is better. And I don't know. It it is added. I mean, like I just I realize now why I like that game so much. Last year is it just it is anyone that complained about the lack of depth to XCOM Enemy Unknown because you know going from XCOM to this, there's a few things that kind of got funneled out just because tech wise there was a lot about XCOM games that kind of sucked. You know, they just they were just there was about it was a little bit uh, I don't know too intense at times and and. This game has added a bunch of other stuff to kind of distract you even more away from that, and I'm I'm love I'm having so much freaking fun with that game again. That's I've awesome. already put 15 hours into it again just within like since it released here in Europe on Friday. So that um, may be so bad. Oh, I I don't know if you would have been able to stream anyway last week, but like I was planning out oh, my streaming schedule and it's like yeah, XCOM Enemy Within comes out, Ethan will be all over that, and it's like. You see the European release dates on Friday and not Tuesday. I couldn't even download updates for Steam. Yeah, because my internet just went just pooped out last <laughs> week for the most part. So I wouldn't have I wouldn't have even been able to. But um, but I'll tell I tell you what I woke up first thing in the morning and it was I, I, the internet came back miraculous. So maybe you know <laughs> nice. the world was was trying to get it set up there. And um, <laughs> everything worked. It downloaded really really quickly. I was like, okay, this is awesome. And I jumped into it. And, I mean, that game is. Uh, I wish, awesome. I wish I wish I'd great. finished the first one because I now I feel the I have to beat that before I can play Enemy Within. So no, no, you don't. Okay, you don't. <laughs> it, it, you, you're not changing. It's it's still the same storyline. It's still the same. Um, it's the same game. They've just added to okay. it, and there's a, a whole right. new faction that you're fighting against. You're fighting against these kind of uh, other other aliens. genetic engineered. No, no, no. They're they're humans. So you've got like oh, a terrorist bastards. group. Fuck, you're fighting what? on the side. What? Oh. There's a lot of shit going on, dude. dude. No, don't play in it. If you get enemy within, mm-hmm. that you're fine. Don't okay. don't worry about XCOM enemy unknown. Just enemy within. That is just go to the campaign burn. and just go. Go. Right? go, 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 go. You're gonna have a lot more tools to work with. You're gonna have a lot more locations uh, to explore. I mean, no, there's no reason to. If you have not played enemy unknown, don't worry about it. Get enemy within and just go with it. Fuck yeah. Have fun. Sold. Smile. Um. Yeah. So. You did a Bertabulous video, first of all, mm-hmm. amazing. Um, but it kind of concerned me. Did you bring over your squad from Enemy Unknown to Enemy Within, and have you lost some good soldiers? No, 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 no. You can't do that. Okay, I was just, I was. So no, I, was, I have not. I, I, was, I, I, I think what? about that. Think about, think about that though. If you like went through Enemy Unknown with like your squad of bros and you save the fucking planet or whatever happens yeah. in that game because i don't know <laughs> and then you bring them That's into within yeah. and then you lose them that would be oh. yeah that team that got killed was uh uh I, i've been playing it on iron man i, I last year i played it 
just normal difficulty, just saved, and and I was a slave to this save. I, I just saved every time, and it was it, it it eventually sucked the fun out of the game because I spent way more time than I needed to, and I took too many chances. And so I'm playing on normal difficulty again because classic is tough. But that was my classic squad that uh, I was doing decent with, and yeah, they got they got killed pretty fast. <laughs> so. Um, so no, I mean, like, and for someone who was playing Enemy Unknown, you're not going to get that squad back. But I mean, it's almost okay because you're going to want to go in and you're going to want to play with them. I'm excited bit, you know? now. You've you've freed me it, from oh, it, from my 2012 don't, faults. Yeah, I was going to say that it, it, if you can, if you like uh, turn-based strategy games at all, like this game is just it is. Oh man, I, I want more games like this. And, and again, it makes me so much more excited for Xenonauts. Yeah. Uh, it makes me so much more excited for I hope, Shadow. Uh, I hope that game does Shadow Run Returns. Guys. Oh well, I think it will. Oh no. Oh, let me tell you, Xenonauts is solid too. All right. <laughs> well, Xenonauts is way more like. Oh, it's gonna be. T- yeah, it's gonna be tough. I have to space out some time once that actually gets the full release. I've held off from playing too much of the uh, current version that's out with, with Xenonauts, but uh, from what I've played, it is. It is more like the XCOM experience I think people want, but again, they've been able to uh, get rid of some of the bullshit as well. But yeah, oh man, there's a lot of tur- turn-based strategies might as well have been dead as far as I was concerned in terms of how I like them. I know you had Civilization, those kind of games, but like I was a Final Fantasy Tactics guy, and I wanted a game like that, but maybe not so RPG-ish, yeah. you know? And uh, that's what Enemy Unknown, Enemy Within has been. So yeah, I'm oh, I'm so pumped about Josh, it. Joe. Josh, are you jumping back in? Hmm. Not yet. I'll wait. I might at some point though, yeah. because I I did like XCOM, but I've got other games on my I need to go back to yeah. list. Like my list of Last of Us and Pirates and Mario and everything and Jam. I'm <laughs> I'm ready. To, I'm actually ready. I'm ready to. I've prepped. I've downloaded all the games again and patched, and I have all the DLC ready. I'm about to jump back into Mass Effect soon. Oh shit! What? I'm going to do the trilogy. Who invited Gifford? the fuck are you doing yeah. why the fuck what what are you doing like a like a paragon run or i guess a renegade run you you weren't an asshole you were maybe still, yeah you were I, I was thinking about i'm like yeah maybe i'm just gonna i'll, I'll do things differently to spice it hey, up or whatever hey, but fem uh, that yeah i mean that was Fem-ship. definitely i yeah all right all right that's that's probably going to happen all right maybe like a badass jennifer hale Ethan, I think Nick, we'll talk Grim Dawn next week. I am curious about that. But Josh, did you want to talk about anything else, or do we want to move on to game pitches and stuff? Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Let's let's do the game pitches. I'd rather. Okay. What can I just say one thing? Yes, yes, you can. Desktop dungeons, awesome. Yep. Super tough. Go yeah. get it. But awesome. Aaron, oh Aaron, my God. Aaron and Great. I talked a little bit about that one last week, so I, I actually streamed yeah. that. Go get I, it. I don't know why, but it was still fun. Um, oh yeah. Did you play um, Dungeon Dashers or the other one? Not yet, but I'm 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 looking at it. Was, I'm like I, my eye, like I'm looking at. it. Like, oh, it looks good. It looks in really the last good. Last couple weeks with between those two games, yeah. but I, I, I like I like what yeah. they have to offer. Also, Tiny yeah. Death Star continues to consume all of my downtime, so uh-huh. I'm playing it right now during the podcast. Um, this new releases mm-hmm. list. I'm not gonna. We're not. We won't talk about all of these, but just, I'm gonna run it down for for the people because uh, I don't know if you guys knew this. Xbox One is out this Friday. Um, I I I, I would buy the Xbox One if money was not an option. I chose to go PlayStation Four first. I will be getting an Xbox One in by the spring if I had to mm-hmm. imagine. But big release of the week. Josh, are you busting out the Wii U, and are you playing th- Super Mario 3D World? Absolutely. All right. All right. Cat. Time. Yes, I'm. Yep, I'm really excited for that. Kylie and I will play that together. I'm gonna stream that on Saturday, I believe. I don't think there's any. I think Aaron was saying there's not online co-op though, so I might have to steal you mm. and make you come play locally with me. But um, okay. Also, super curious about Adventure Time: Explore the Dungeon because I don't know. Uh, did they get yeah, any reviews? Uh, did yeah, I did. Uh, I, uh, who was it? Somebody I didn't really trust, though. Eurogamer. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're always first. Yeah. Yeah. Also, they're bad. Yeah. It's okay. I don't like to talk shit about a lot of people, but they're terrible. Um, so, Eurogamer, 
didn't like. I don't. I don't remember who reviewed it. I don't know. I shouldn't talk shit well, because already... it could have been somebody I really love, and I don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they didn't like it so much. Uh, they were talking about how it was um, just a little too light on the things that like stuff to do. I yeah, guess you know, sure. like it. It kind of made sense. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is. Which is, so uh, I never really got into the show, so I'm like, I'm trying to cram as many episodes. I'm like been watching it while I'm doing other things for the last week so I can mm-hmm. get some of these jokes as I figure that's probably 75% of the game. But I've already bought the game. So I'm going to give it a try. So um the But it, I like Adventure Time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I support like what show. it's trying to do. It's fantastic. <laughs> and then, you know, um, because you know PlayStation 4 out last week, European. Xbox One this week, then fucking matter cuz Nintendo cuz The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds is also out and some people. Oh yeah! Oh god! Get that 3DS. Love, going. Oh, yeah! How excited are Playing you, that. Ethan? Um. Also, Mario Party <laughs> Island Tour. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. What's going on? What's going on with the Playstations? Oh, NBA Live 14 is actually a real thing. I watched a stream of it and it looks jank as hell. Um. <laughs> I can't believe that's actually coming out. I'm disappointed because I misread this. It's called Aquapaza. I thought it was Aqua Pizza, so I'm less interested in that. <laughs> um, farming Simulator for the PS3. Soul Calibur 2 HD Online, my favorite Soul Calibur. That's on PSN and Xbox Live Arcade. Kind of hoped it would show up on PC, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have Link because I was the I played the GameCube version back in the day, so. Mm. There's also a weird Sony-ish game called Stick It to the Man that's coming out for PS3 and PSN that I will be checking out uh, next week sometime. Uh, I think I posted a trailer on our Tumblr page a while back about that one. And then, don't even play these consoles because Tearaway is out on Vita this week too, Josh. Are you on the Tearaway God, train? dang it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean... I want to play that too. That's but me. I might wait. Actually, I might wait on that because that's one of those games that it's definitely Anytime. going to get at least a discount on PS Plus. Yeah. You yeah. know, right, probably right after the holidays. So that's Media Molecule, the um, the little big planet guys. That's their their next big game and uh, look charming as fuck. Um, okay, on yeah, the Xbox God, that One looks games. So good. Um, oh, also Assassin's Creed Four Black Flag out for PC and Xbox One this week. I'm grabbing it on PC. Because rock paper shotgun said all I needed yeah. to say. Between them and Aaron, I was I was fucked. We're gonna go pirating. We're not gonna necessarily play Assassin's Creed, but we are gonna do some pirating. <laughs> to, you know what? Uh, uh, rock paper shotgun. They they get a lot of shit sometimes. Uh, sometimes for me, just for their 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 attitude. I love. Uh, they're smarmy fuckers, and I like that. But they're. Their stupid like review of it's a review of the PC. Like that was <laughs> no. funny. Uh, I hate that was funny I because hate... I the hardware review things are oh. dumb. Hardware reviews before even before they're publicly out, like you don't even know what's gonna break on launch day, and I don't even know what hardware reviews mean. Like it's like I know they what work, even... and we're waiting on the games. We know what these things are. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's so that was just really dumb. Polygon put like the. Woo. Most effort into the most the, the most like it ain't thing I've ever seen. That was cr- the craziest shit. It's all animated. Yeah, go check Parallax out Parallax their... scrolling. It's but got hot what? vector graphics. I didn't understand. I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. But man, I, I gotta tell you, man, from Sexy. Polygon, I, everyone's out to it. Look good. Their yeah. website. Looks oh no good. no yeah. They are professional I'm, ass writers. Every, I mean, I no no I, they're no, no. this. I work with. I get it. I but get it was it. so I, weird. It was. No, no, weird. hang on, was, hang on. Was, I get it. No way. I want to say something. I get it. And I, I, first of all, love some of those writers over there. Justin McElroy is like my favorite, Mc, and I like McElroy. Russ Pitts. I like Chris Plant. What's it? What's his name? McElroy. McElroy. The McElroy. And uh, McEl McElroy. McElroy. That's the dog from Jetsons. <laughs> um, you know what? Whatever. He he wouldn't care. I'm sure. Uh, but that like. Just sometimes it gets a little pretentious over there. Sure. It does. It happens. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, but that just like they dedicated, it seemed like a lot of resources, mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of talent and well, time mean, and effort to this thing that was like, why did you do that? <laughs> like, what? So it's like the thi- it was really, that was just weird I and mean, dumb. I- but I, I respect what they th- think that they 
were doing like they yeah. thought they were doing a, a real service to the people. It, but I, it's also I, I do believe now, that. It's funny now that. to see some of the other sites try to catch up to them. Like G- GameSpot, like they they've been playing with their their layouts of their articles, and um, I think um, and Destructoid as well has been trying to do. Uh, uh, they've been changing things up, but uh, I, as I work with web developers during the day, and like every time, multiple times a, you know, I'd say once a month we get asked to do basically make blog blog articles that look like the stuff on Polygon. It's just like you don't just you don't just do that. <laughs> like yeah, right. <laughs> um. Anyway, Xbox One games, Angry Bird, Star Wars. I don't care. <gasps> um. Let's see. Battlefield, Call of Duty. How- Dead Rising Three. That still, still looks like looks my game of the lo- of all the launches. Like, yeah, that game looks awesome. Even oh the reviews, gosh. like the stuff that the the technical issues that it might have, like it still seems like the the game. If you're if you're mm-hmm. if you're going to buy a console based on one game, I, I still think this is the one you base it off of. So, mm-hmm. yeah, from looks- somebody that hasn't come close to touching it, but. Um, looks you like, should touch it. Touch it hard. I won't, touch I, it real hard. Just, touch it for me. Touch it. It's if if one of you guys gets, I will tell you. If you, one of you guys you get fly home, Xbox better. One and you get that game, when I when I come home, um, I'm gonna probably hang out oh, at your shit. house for a day, and that's what I'm gonna do. Dude, if you get me drunk when you come home, I'll probably buy an Xbox One just so we can do that. Okay. Yeah. I absolutely. get me drunk. I'll buy an Xbox One. My home. house. I'll sleep with you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then we can play whatever we want. I don't care. I'll buy you an Xbox. Um, Forza. Probably really pretty. Um, yeah. Fighter Within. Cars. It's probably a Kinect thingy. Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Looks like it's actually going to make it out for launch. Um, Madden. Great is, game. Is probably sounding like the best EA sports upgrade, but I've not been too impressed with uh, FIFA's upgrades. So I think the, the sports game to get remains NBA 2K14. Need for Speed Rivals. It looks so good. It looks fun. I want to yeah. play it. It actually looks fun. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I, I will probably get that at some point. And then who the fuck knows what's going to happen with Rise. Um, your entertainment it, it, of the it week should... Fun, yeah. Your entertainment of the week should actually come from reading Loco Cycle reviews, because that it looks god-awful. Poor Twisted Pixel. What has happened? Um, Loco Cycle. So it's, huh. it's the game where they have this AI-controlled futuristic motorcycle that is supposed to sound like GLaDOS, but isn't as well-written. And this... Mexican guy is trapped. His like leg is caught on the motorcycle. So the whole game is the motorcycle dragging him through roads in the story. And apparently they got Freddy Rodriguez who's been in stuff. He's playing the guy that's getting dragged behind the bike, <laughs> but he's speaking Spanish the entire time. So he can't actually communicate really? with the bike, but so the entire game is subtitled, and you're like moving around really quickly behind behind the motorcycle, but you have to read all the text. So it's like funny in concept, like written down, but in execution, it it sounds like it's pretty pretty broken. Well, so. unless you don't have to read the text, right? Right. Unless you're like, I uh, mean, that's I'm well cultured, saying. well cultured, and prepared for the 21st century. Um, that's probably true. Um, and then Crimson Dragons getting man, they are. People are ripping that game into awesome reviews. Uh, oh, what? Yeah, Penny Arcade report. What do you mean? An aw- well, well, let me let me get the Penny Arcade report quote. Well, we figured this out. What does Eurogamer say? <laughs> I, uh, but yeah, this is the what spiritual successor to Panzer Dragoon and all that stuff. So, let me get the here's the quote. Um, well, here's the headline: Crimson Dragon isn't just a terrible free to pay game but also a criminal Panzer Dragoon game. And the here's the last two lines. Ethan, you'll love this for its positivity. Crimson Dragon is a waste, and it's likely that poor sales could kill the idea of a real Panzer Dragoon revival. Fuck this game so hard. <laughs> so you guys can get that, because that's, tw- that's only $20. Well, they, yeah, wow, all, that's a- like all the downloadable games for Xbox One are they they they're starting at twenty bucks, so I think we're gonna start to see that little increase. And then Killer Instincts out there free to play, uh, which I've heard decent things about that game actually. Um, and is there anything else on the PC? Mighty Quest for Epic Loot is now on Steam Early Access. That's the Ubisoft game that Jason's been playing. Um, 
world basketball tycoon. Okay. What? And, and Zoo Tycoon is also out this week. I'll talk about Zoo Tycoon in a little bit. So, world basketball tycoon. Who the hell is that audience? Is, I want to. I want to meet that guy. Yeah. What, what What is your goal in that game? To just get the American team and then win <laughs> everything? I mean, like. Yeah. Never mind. I was they could go really racist places that I won't go to. Um, racist places. Game pitches. I'll start with Zoo Tycoon. <laughs> racist um, places. That's my place. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Zoo Tycoon. Zoo Tycoon. Um, we have that already. A new tycoon a... game. And you might be interested in this, or your girlfriend might be interested in this a little bit, Josh. But I'm not really interested in it, but it did at least say that the Kinect can be used where you can make faces at the animals, and they'll make faces back. And it's supposed to be adorable. Like, just adorable screenshots of, you know, zookeepers interacting with really cute animals and you're raising them and making your zoo a better place Mm -hmm. which sounds lovely in the game actually you know people said yeah it's pretty 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 damn charming and it all works so there you go i think that's out on xbox one and uh, um uh pc but um there are more things that happen at zoos like every zookeeper that i have talked to just has stories about the people that come to zoos. So I think we need to do a dark side of Zoo Tycoon expansion and just talk about, like, you know, I don't know, like half price day at, zoo, at the zoo and what, what actually happens when, um, you know, people won't stop feeding the monkeys type of types of scenarios. So um, I don't know if you... <laughs> or someone takes a dump in a fountain. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you remain the tycoon that needs to oversee stuff, or maybe you can, I don't know, maybe maybe it's like Zoo Tycoon Revenge, you can control some of the animals. Um, Oh, that would be fun. I would like that. Like a Zoo Tycoon meets like Rise of the Planet of the Apes, where you are the, you're you're the hyper-intelligent animal, and you have to convince all the other ones to kind of work with you to to write Half Price Day. But yeah. your yeah, so your goal can't be to escape because then you're just gonna get put down and that's sad. But if your goal was just to like you got points for doing something funny or cool to get some justice against all yes. the you know, you know idiot uh, attend zoo attendees, yeah, that would that, the zoo guests, yeah, that would be that sounds fun. I'd, do, I'd, I'd, I'd play that. that. I'd play that. You make the zoo a better place. Like your your goal is as one of the animals to make it the best zoo for the people mm-hmm. and for the animals. We don't. Have to I would to- rather make it a horrifying place. I would rather make it the kind of place that you don't want to take your kids back to, uh, because your kids have been eaten alive by a hippopotamus. <laughs> uh, that actually happens. Well, that's the very renegade often. round. Mm-hmm. You can choose paragon or renegade when you play this game. That's oh yeah. I, I don't I don't usually play the black bad guy, but animals get. <laughs> We shit on animals pretty hard. So I think it's tycoon okay. Tycoon justice. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I'd be more than happy to, to chomp on some little snot nosed little, little fucks, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my god, the hippopotamus is out of its hippopotamus pool. <laughs> he's hungry. <laughs> he's, he's hungry. <laughs> you know, more people are killed by hippopotamuses than by uh, crocodiles. Seriously? Fun fact. Yep. Absolutely. I was uh, when I was playing uh, Deadfall, I came across a pit with crocodiles at the bottom, and when yeah. I put my cursor over the top of them to shoot them, it turned green as it does when you are trying to shoot an ally, and it never told me why these crocodiles were my friends. I was good. very confused. That's awesome, though. Those are good friends to have. <laughs> well, because you probably have to jump on their heads to get across. That's the pit. exactly. I was like, am I playing Pitfall? <laughs> I really thought it was going in, going in that direction. I think I made that joke. Thank you, Josh. Mm-hmm. Josh, open up that dream journal and blow some minds. Okay, I've got two here. Uh, I don't know how to choose between them, though. Um, Why choose? Well, okay, so <laughs> this one is called... And both of these... The second one is actually about an actual game in the dream, but this first one was just so gamey, I had, this, I had to include this. So uh, I called this one... Don't run over those cats. <laughs> Tell me if you've heard this one. It's like Frogger. Uh, 
and I'm just going to read it as I as I type this stuff as I normally do. So, so wait, is future set, call, set, set the scene. Is this like you wake up in the morning and write these? Oh, down, sure, is, right. Or is this like yeah. wake up in a sweat at 3 a.m. Just grab the book and just jot it down and then pass back out. Uh, when I wake up in the morning. Um, and my alarm goes off a warning. That's when I, I don't think I'm going to make, I, sorry, damn, save my phone. <laughs> I, I grab my phone and I write this stuff down. So, okay. uh, I, this is usually like, I have a couple of dreams each night sure. and this is, I only ever get the last one because I don't, you know, that's mm-hmm. like the one that's fresh. Uh, there's a lot of lo- great lost, uh, uh, game ideas, that, but so yeah, so these are just a couple that, um, dreams I had, I wake up, I write this stuff down. This is what exactly what I wrote. Don't run over those cats. Future, colon. Humanity destroyed. Cats thrive. I alone survive in my Lincoln Navigator. <laughs> cats love me, as long as I don't run over too many of them. So many cats. Hard to see them when parking. As I run over more and more of them. And this is in... Uh, <laughs> this is Princey's here. Impossible to dodge them all, and they don't hear the horn. Are they all deaf? Their meows start to harmonize. Once they are all meowing in sync, they turn their eyes towards me and attack. Pure terror. Meow mix. Also, basements are my only retreat. They can find their way into cars, but not basements. So, in this dream, I was like... I was like last man or whatever, right? And the cats loved me, except it was like I was always really afraid of them because they, there were literally so many on the road or just like anywhere. Not just I wasn't just on the highway and stuff, just like driving around like the city, and they would just be everywhere and always be honking and trying to get out of the way. But I would just no matter what, you just have to run over a lot of cats because there's just like a sea of cats, and <laughs> and they would lots they try to move out of the way, but I just run over them, and then they would start to get upset and like. So there was like a limit, obviously, to how many, you know, cats that you could run over before they would all like they would they would hit like this crescendo of like the meows, and they would like meow meow meow, oh, and they would just they would they would climb up on the car, and they were getting inside the car from like the wheel wells and shit, like tearing their way in through the cab, and yeah, it it was it was not good. The dream actually ended with me getting like slaughtered oh, no. by cats. It was not good. So, no. I mean, that takes I'm a just while. thinking like, yeah, this is a driving game, you know, <laughs> plus at the steering wheel and you, you just got to like uh, crazy taxi engine. Um, yeah, I was thinking more like, uh, something like more realistic. It's, you need some like physics for like running over the cats. I was thinking about the spin tires, uh, demo. Do you remember that? With the real good mud physics, but you could just that could be cat guts, <laughs> you know. You're sliding around on them, and so you gotta you gotta you gotta park. You know, you know you gotta like maybe you just do missions, and you know you gotta get supply runs and stuff because obviously it's the apocalypse. But uh, don't run over those cats, or they will kill you. That's good advice, even that in is real good life. advice. So, how, what do you guys think? Does that sound fun? Sounds I, like a good old Android something. game. Sounds like it. Yeah, it sounds like a Newgrounds game. Yeah. <laughs> get 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 half brick on the phone. They're gonna make they're gonna make yeah. this one for you. Or Adult Swim, one of the two. Okay, you ready for the next one? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so, so this one's called Marvel Thing. I don't know. That was a terrible name, but uh, you'll see what it is. So uh, I'm at a large family gathering for the weekend. Uh, this was I remember this was like this is like a big. Whatever, this part doesn't matter. So, time for bed. <laughs> so many people, even bathrooms, have sleeping bags in them. Can't find a place to poop. Go into attic and find a baller home theater. <laughs> On it is a movie slash game. It starts out, and I think it's the new X-Men movie. But then all the characters start partying in the mansion, getting drunk, frisky. Suddenly, Deadpool comes on screen and takes off his mask. It's Val Kilmer. He does his best Wade Wilson, which I remember feeling embarrassed for. <laughs> Stuttered and sounded like Curly. Only line I remember as he's ushered off camera by another character, he goes, I've got skins, as he tears the sleeves off of his shirt. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm playing a top-down shooter where Deadpool and Spider-Man are rampaging through a city with guns. Disappointingly destructible environments couldn't use their powers because they couldn't put down the guns. Also, unlimited ammo. Uh, and then I, this is actually I wrote this down. I actually put the controller down. I have never in my life full of video game dreams voluntarily quit playing. Not once. <laughs> Zero out of ten. Not recommended. So, 
So uh, yeah, that one obviously that's a bad pitch because no one would want to actually play that. But <laughs> it was, it was just kind dream. of funny that that like just yeah. like like man, that just sounds like a just you know how many of those like bad licensed top down shooters that we had. It's like let's give superheroes guns and not let them use their powers because it, <laughs> that's all they do is just shoot and it's a bad like shooter. Like someone's gonna make that. That's gonna actually happen. That would be really. It reminds me of like bad kids toys where they just give everything a car and a gun. It's I like wish. it's a Spider Man car and it shoots spider guns. I kind of <laughs> like, wish you know, like, like, you know, that's act- not the movies. Something like Activision when they're about to lose their their license to something that they would make a game like that. <laughs> Right. It's just like, I don't know, Spider Man with guns. Um Yeah. But I, the I, people I, that liked Crush Hour would like that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did um What's it? Did uh you get concerned about um I don't know, how critical you are if you literally stop playing you like you gave up on the dream within the dream? Like, no, this yeah. is <laughs> this is I, bad. I disgusted myself with my own like <laughs> poor video game recreation. Like I, I, I dream about games a lot. I'm like in my dream, I'm playing a game, and usually I'm having a really good time. And I wake up immediately going, "Oh my god, that was awesome!" And then like the more I think about, it, I'm like, "Eh, maybe it wasn't that cool." But in the <laughs> dream, when I was there, it was awesome. This one was just bad. How do you know the Val Kilmer has not? utilize some sort of strange days like neural implant device and oh, he shit. is trying to communicate his ideas to you his, um, his dream was Val for some Kilmer's reason fault? oh my god <laughs> <That's me. laughs> what is Val Kilmer doing right that, now that's my actually, dreams Val actually that's, yeah. that's a lot Get more believable than Josh Lee having a boring dream or a bad idea oh, I was going to say <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Val Kilmer should be in our, our game I remember, like many many pitches ago, we had the one about the real actors, like oh, yeah. <laughs> coming in, to, like see, yeah, that was uh, Val could show up. Yeah, yeah, he'd like that. That'd be good for Val. Val, like, Val, you gotta stop getting that young man's brain. He's trying to dream good dreams. <laughs> <laughs> That's Val's very old roommate for some reason. I don't know why. I got skins. <laughs> that was just it was the dumbest thing. Where did I come up with this shit? I love it. I love it. Um, Ethan, do you want to go with anything, or we we want to get out of here? Why don't I? Also, I'm going to save this one um, because this semi truck detective idea has is okay. is festering in my brain. I've got some ideas. All right. Well, we'll save that for another time, so J- Josh can bring his <laughs> a, truck advice. That's a, It has to start with a. Uh, with somebody who doesn't actually drive trucks being found dead sleeping in the back of one of those trucks. <laughs> with Val Kilmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for the Night Force Action Report chat. Thanks for hanging out with us uh, live every Tuesday on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. Ethan Moses and Josh Lee, thanks for hanging out with us live in my yeah. open broadcast software window. Yeah, thanks. Every Tuesday <laughs> My <night>. pleasure. <laughs> you guys look good. That's it. We'll see ya.